Our critic guest today is Leonard Feather, an authority on jazz in more ways than one. He's published an encyclopedia of jazz and several shorter books on special topics. He's also composed many blues for bands and vocalists. Leonard, what he wants you to do is convey to us the particular quality of the blues with something more than the statistical abstract that I was able to give. Well, uh, generally speaking, you can look at the blues from three main standpoints. To some people, the blues just means a mood or a state of mind, the kind of wonderful, warm, earthy feeling you can get with the extensive use of blue notes. As Jimmy Rushing once said, the blues came from way back in slavery days, and it had some roots in the spiritual, and some in what Jimmy called the he and she songs, and uh, some in the work songs too. But to most singers today, the blues really means a regular 12-measure, three-line format, of which, as you pointed out, the first and second lines are generally the same, the way you heard Jimmy sing them a moment ago. And then to musicians, the blues is a sequence of chords, usually 12 measures long. We can start from the beginning, uh, give them the C scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, the first three bars would be on the regular C chord, one, three, five, eight. On the fourth bar, you add the flatted or blue seventh. Then on the fifth measure, you get to a chord based or rooted on the fourth note of the scale, that is one, two, three, four, based on F, F seventh chord. You go back to the C chord for two bars. <coughs> then on the ninth bar, you go to the chord based on the fifth note of the scale, that is G, G seventh chord for two bars. And on the last two bars, you go to the C chord again. Now these entire 12 measures are fundamentally based on three chords based on the first, fourth, and fifth note of the scale. Well, it strikes me that uh, this structure, while it is precise, is fairly intricate, too. Yes. And it also strikes me that anything as complex as this must have a pretty substantial background, both in time and in place. Well, yes, this pattern is much older than jazz itself, uh, older than any blues as we know it, because, as a matter of fact, there's a folk song that some people believe goes back as far as 1840, and it's built on exactly the same pattern, starting on the first note, going up to the fourth, and going to the fifth. You didn't fool me for a minute, Leonard, that and I recognize Frankie and Johnny. Actually, we had it in our program on early jazz. Right. Well, now, I'd like to ask Billy Taylor to embellish those uh, same chords that I played a few moments ago, and we'd like to show how you can superimpose just about any famous blues composition on the same pattern of chords, including even some of the famous works of W.C. Handy. One, two. 